Information about the world of running, inspiration to fuel passion and excellence, and ideas for making connections and finding community. You're listening to A to Z Running. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the A to Z Running Podcast, where we help runners thrive. I'm Andy. And I'm Zach, and in this episode, we've got a lot of great content for you, like outstanding results from U.S. Soil Marathon Project and more, as well as a discussion about why it is so hard to thrive mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. be it because of the holidays and specific contextual circumstances or the fact that thriving is always hard. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of reasons that tend to come together during these times of year. Yeah, it's evergreen content. And of course, we are going (laughs) to bring it full circle with great suggestions, insights from all and many of you to Mm -hmm. help support the conversation. Yes. And first, please follow and subscribe. If you want good stuff to your inbox, not just like advertisements. She basically just said that everything that isn't ours is not good. (laughs) No, what I'm saying is instead of having advertisements and things filling your inbox, why not get stuff that can help you? Like running content that can help you thrive as a runner. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. And get involved in the conversation so that we can do things like embarrass you on the show by saying what you shared. Wait, no. It's not embarrassing you because it's shared publicly. Anyways. Mm -hmm. um, Also, these are great things. And so Bill Johncock made a comment talking about most recent episode. This was the nutrition episode with Megan as our guest. And he said, Megan did a great job simplifying many of the concepts of nutrition people frequently get lost in the weeds of the minutia details without understanding the basic fundamentals of nutrition. Very true, Bill. Get a solid understanding, he continued, of the basics like macronutrients, and then you can evaluate the details like micronutrients. Learning to shoot a layup before attempting a 360 slam dunk, but I do want to see that attempt footage when you attempt that 360 (laughs) slam dunk. Be sure to post the video. Then we must follow through on the correct diet. And that's the really challenging part. Mm -hmm. Bill, you are right. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Well, I do want to mention, too, something that can help you thrive during the holidays is something that I've been utilizing and Zach has been appreciating immensely. I don't know what she's talking about (laughs) right now. Food. Oh. That fueled 30-minute dinners to live and run well by Chelsea of May's Menu I've been loving it personally. I one of the family favorites now is the quinoa bu- Buddha bowl. <laughs> Sorry, that was hard to say. Say that three quinoa times Quinoa Buddha bowl. And Zach actually said like, I call you need it to have it every week. Food and it's good. <laughs> Very good. And uh, curried salmon pita and orange marmalade chicken. These are things that I have never even thought about attempting and now I can't imagine not having it as part of my routine so this is this is something that interests you if you want to cook like pretty fancy stuff in under 30 minutes this is for you so I'm going to put a link in our blog post associated with this episode which is a to z running.com slash episode 64 all right let's get started with the world of running In the words of Aaron Laplander, one of our athletes, this week's world of running is lit. And I mean that. Okay. All right, Aaron. People's feet were like (laughs) figuratively, but almost literally on fire. Don't even try to. It was a great (laughs) marathoning weekend on U.S. soil for the Marathon Project. It's rumored that it was the fastest American showing. Like in general, I I would think so with numbers in a single race, in a single race. Yep. And there was 40 women and 48 men. Very small field. And they all ran fast. (laughs) Yes, it was absolutely incredible. I did want to mention that there were eight women under the Olympic standard, which is 229.30. Solid. Yeah. And seven men under 210, but an additional five. So 12 under the Olympic standard for men, which is 211.30. Mm. Very fast times. So let's talk about some of the details. First was Sarah Hall. Only 11 weeks, I believe, after the London Marathon, she came blazing through and yet another PR. Wow. Significant PR. 220.32 was her time. 
Solid. So put on your running history caps a moment. 21936 is the current American record. And so that's just that's under a minute. Mm-hmm. And that's held by Dina Castor, American marathoning legend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Sarah was going for that. And I, I believe she'll go for it again because she has amazing capabilities. And if she were to not have just come off of London and, you know, who knows, we could throw all kinds of what ifs in there. But her potentiality is very high in this marathoning distance. And second was Kiro, Kira D'Amato. Kiro, I like that. <laughs> I've only mentioned her name a hundred times in this podcast. Very nice. <laughs> so she ran a time of 2.22.56, which is an 11-minute PR. Okay, that can't be true. Already amazing time. How? Like How already you run an 11-minute PR? Were you walking the last time? <laughs> Did no, you walk she for a wasn't. couple of miles just to, she, just to make that's sure. That's the amazing thing is that like Kira's at this amazing level, but she keeps leveling up, and it's been a thrill to watch her in 2020. I have to say that might be one of my 2020 highlights is watching Kira D'Amato yeah run in this year. Just keeping keeping the running spirit alive, yes. single handedly <laughs> keeping American distance running interesting there's been other Cura great D'Amato. things going on too uh she's now the fastest D'Amato in the family i thought i'd put that out there because it's very important to her to beat her husband's pr not very nice that she's rubbing it in her children's faces though at the same time <laughs> i'm faster than you i'm kidding no, i'm kidding <laughs> so good so fastest D'Amato. third kellen taylor she had a solid run it wasn't her pr but she already has a speedy it. one and remember she's the one who is the the certified fire um, firefighter and has foster children like she oh, that's is right. she super... ran this race carrying another human on her shoulders <laughs> it, i that's would love to see her do something like that but she is incredibly gifted in many ways and she just has a big heart as well with um, fostering children as well so she ran 225 22 mm-hmm. it was just under a minute off her pr yeah not bad fourth emma bates she had a gnarly race it was I, gross actually it was, it was quite mm, disgusting yes and the marathon <laughs> I'm not saying can that be to judge anyway Emma, yeah anyway but the marathon is is quite uh disgusting this was not reported on i had to find it on her personal instagram account oh, but she great. you went snooping I, <laughs> she vomited four times and she had to stop to do it she said that she has not perfected the art of puking on the run and girl I hope not i just don't know many people that would have that skill and, and then and then be fourth in a world class marathon, and only missing her PR by thirteen seconds in the Incredible. process. Incredible! So and she 13, did that's four pukes that, probably count for at least thirteen oh, seconds. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, that's okay. amazing. Usually you got to assume two or three seconds of puke. Sometimes five or six when it's really wretched. Get this it? is not our main t- wretched. <laughs> this is not our main topic conversation, Zach. I, although that could You're be the one running who well up sick. Puking. Yeah. So fifth was Natasha Wodick of Canada, and she ran two twenty six. So that's the second fastest all time for a Canadian woman. And at thirty nine years old. At thirty nine years old. Okay. I'm loving that. You ladies in your thirties, keep it up. Actually, everyone I've mentioned except for Emma Bates so far. So Sarah. <laughs> Now she's going to start counting ages. And in eighth place, we've got, we're skipping a few, but in eighth place from Mexico, running a world, an Olympic marathon standard Mm -hmm. to put her in the games. Yeah, that's exciting. That's Ursula Patricia Sanchez Garcia. Mm -hmm. Incredible. So now let's talk about the men's race act because the winner was a bit of a surprise. Yeah. Well, when you run a two and a half minute PR to win a major marathon like this, that uh, that would count. So that's Martin Hare running 208.59. That's good for what is it? Seventh all time on the U.S. list and only three seconds behind Abdi Abdurrahman's best marathon time, which is, you know, that's he's putting himself in the record books here. Um, So, okay, so it should be noted that he's also a fourth year medical student coming off of weeks of treating COVID patients. That's what he's been doing. 
as he gears up for this race. That's just really, that's really something. Mm -hmm. So um, he was also sixth at the Olympic trial. So he did not make that Olympic team by a hair, you know, just a few places. And clearly he's got the grit seeing something like that. That's incredible. Yeah, it's really impressive. He has two daughters and a wife that were there cheering him on. And And he loves the story. She always goes to the backstory. (laughs) And and, and he's got such a full life, you know, and Mm. and I really enjoy researching people like him and being excited for him as he pursues this as as part of his journey and obviously like he was six so he's not coming out of nowhere but everyone's really getting to know him now this really puts him in the mouths of runners and commentators everywhere yes definitely so second place was also substantial um this one being noah Drotti, and he, so he's run he's he's the guy who does all sorts of interesting things and comes out of nowhere every single time. It's really something. And my first memory of Noah Drotti was when he ran the 10K at the U.S. Championships or maybe it was the Olympic Trials, one of the two, but at a U.S. Championship level event. And he was wearing some kind of wonky looking hat, some shades that don't belong on an elite runner's face, and um, just <laughs> picture his full appearance. Uh, let's see, go back to the 70s, maybe late 60s. And just everything except for the the bell bottom pants. He's very fun. In in this race, he was wearing a hat. And oh his yeah, hair was he does down. his whole thing. Yep, his his very cool hip cat hair. Yeah. yeah. So Noah Drade, interesting fellow. Um, he was second in a time of two oh nine oh nine. Good for ninth all time on the U.S. list. I do want to interject. So Noah is one of those people I really like. Uh, finding backstory on as well because he never made a final in NCAA's like he had the no NCAA's uh, final no high school state meet right. he's from Indiana he's from way. Indiana so he's like the guy who kept going and is now reaching his potential and it's amazing to watch him flourish and it brings people like me you know from an NAIA school like hope that we can really pursue our passions and get to a like keep leveling up and if any of you are prefontaine fans out there he definitely has some prefontaine flair to him and his his life in general so good stuff from noah i should mention that time is one second slower than meb's pr so this is this is what we're talking about these guys are running these kinds of Mm. performances yeah incredible stuff um and then let's skip a few places because we do want to talk about nathan martin in Mm. ninth place so we've had him on the show a little bit and we certainly have mentioned his name because we've got some backstory with him i raced him in college and he's kind of a local-ish you know michigan kind of thing um so nathan martin running Another outstanding performance. Yes. Two eleven oh five. Good for an Olympic world Olympic standard. Um, certainly, you know, he he didn't place high enough to go to the Olympic team this year, but he has got the stuff. He does. Now wow. he has placed in top ten at many US road championships yes. and also he was the runner up in the twenty K championships in two thousand nineteen. And uh, he's been third in the US marathon championships yeah, as well. Yeah. I don't remember what year that was. So um he's got Like there's so many of these runners that I am so excited to get to talk about um, because they're phenomenal. And he's been grinding a long time, too. And he's someone that we really enjoy connecting with at races and following his career because he also is an NAIA guy. That's it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of connecting with him precisely, we did reach out and ask him if he would share a few thoughts about the race, the Marathon Project event itself. So let's hear from Nathan. Why, hello there, everyone. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Nathan Martin, a Michigan marathoner. Uh, Andy and Zach asked if I say a few words about my race today. Um, just finished up with the Marathon Project race in Arizona. Was able to clock an amazing time of 2.11.05, placing ninth. Um, and yeah, overall, it was an amazing day. Conditions were great, course was great, and competition was unbelievable. So many fast times ran today. I'm just very thankful for it, thankful for the opportunity to just kind of say how the race went, which it went good. I was shooting for a sub-210, but I can't complain with a 211. So big shout-out to Andy and Zach for all they do for Michigan and running just in general. And, yeah, thanks for the opportunity to just kind of talk. Hopefully, whoever you are, you appreciate the video, pushing for your goals, and keep fighting through. So with that said, you guys, venture on. Thanks, Nathan, and certainly congratulations to the many who saw incredible performances Mm -hmm. over the weekend. So one final thing in the world of running that we did want to mention, because it's just 
Interesting, interesting stuff. So this published by Athletics Weekly, which is uh, the the British athletics publication that really covers track and field, probably some of the best coverage in the world. Um, and they they shared an article just recently, um, and we'll put a link to it. And it was about Eric Shirley, a British runner who was an Olympian in 1956 as well as 1960. So that puts him at 91 years of age presently. And still going strong, so still competing at 91 years old. They mentioned a couple of events. He does like a mile, does an 800, but he races like regularly. Um, And I just wanted to share two quotes with you. I'm not going to give you the whole article. It's about his life and his backstory. It's great stuff. Read the article if you need some good track and field reading. Well, two poll quotes, wonderful things here. First, mentioning his competitive nature, he said, the problem now is that youngsters of 90, he's referring to, 90 year old men youngsters of 90 will be coming into my events and i'll be competing against younger people they will be fit and strong so i'll have to be in top form to win my age group i almost didn't get through that without laughing out loud that is so funny i love well and the fact he's gonna, that he's gonna be 92 how are they youngsters when they're two years younger I tell than you me? what these these <laughs> older people well, they're getting good. after it doing cool and things. and they will be fit and strong fit and strong and then finally it was mentioned um in response to what's the thing that gets him out the door most days he replies without hesitation quote from the article habit hmm Yes, sir. 91 years. All right. Probably six, more than 60 years of habit. Well, if you want to follow up on any of the things shared here, we've got links and a bunch of other details on the, on the website. All right, so for our main topic in the show today, we did want to talk about the answer to this very important question, which is why is it hard to thrive right now? Hmm. Now, fill in the blank with what right now means when you're listening to this. Certainly, if you are amongst the holidays, as many of us are as we're publishing this, that may be relevant. Uh, But we don't really want to spend this episode talking about the holidays specifically either. Also, there's covid But, you know, let me use a phrase here. Um, It is too much the ubiquitous shrug phrase. So we're not going to talk about COVID. Instead, we're going to talk about the kinds of things that always make it hard to thrive. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that they are accentuated by other life circumstances, whatever those may be. But when we talk about thriving and how running can be a positive contribution to our lives, a lot can get in the way. A lot, such as deviating from the routine. So the simple fact that we know routine is good and we want and crave routine for many levels, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, all those things. Um, So when we have to deviate from routine or when we choose to one or the other in any situation that can be problematic for us. Yeah. And there's those of us who really struggle with not wanting a routine to be free of routine. Your body hates it. When you do exactly that. I'm, I'm kidding. but there is a tension there for me yes. personally because i like to be able to do what i want to do when i want to do it <laughs> wow i sound like also, my two-year-old <laughs> andy struggles with the concept of like i'm gonna run at 10 o'clock every day kind of thing because something else might be happening at 10 o'clock so i i've mentioned before like in my work like i'm a gig worker so i will have different schedule like sometime i'll be working all day sometimes i'll be working in the evening so i don't have a set routine or something that's making me have a set routine now having children has helped with that and having necessary times like this is the time i can run uh, is helpful to me but there are some of us probably fewer in the running community i'm guessing that it's probably more of a rarity to to have a like a repulsion against routine um but it i feel better when i have a plan and it happens more when i have a routine and a plan for what i'm gonna do yeah there's some lot there, there's a lot of good points to uh, structuring at least to some degree and we've talked about that almost ad nauseum at times on the show um and p- part of the reason why we talk about it so much is because you may be like others on air who no matter how many times someone tells this person a routine is good. You should plan something, anything, plan anything, try it. It's good. It doesn't happen. So 
other areas where routine is important. Things like like running at different times of day. So if you've been running in the morning a lot and then suddenly you have a period of time where you're off work, if that's the case, or where kids are not doing the same thing in their routine and so it throws off your routine, any of those kinds of things, the time of day change matters. It makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. It makes a difference in how your body is processing fuel and nutrition. It makes a difference in where your rest and sleep are happening and all of those kinds of things. So we talk so much with, when, especially when we're talking with like younger athletes, um, you know, college kids who are home for the holidays, those kinds of situations. Um, and it's like, you know, the holidays are a period of time that just throw everything into the mixer and it's just like blend it all up and see what happens. Um, but it's so important that we still carve out time for certain things at certain times um, and if it has to be a different time of day than what I'm used to at least trying to re retain some kind of consistency where possible still helps that brings us to our next point <laughs> yeah um, so being disciplined or undisciplined is one of the things that prevents us from thriving um, and discipline in any areas of our life can be difficult but one of the worst parts about it is when I'm undisciplined in something and then I feel badly about it mm -hmm. like I know I need to do something I don't do it and then I feel badly mm -hmm. and now I've got several problems that I've created for myself mm -hmm. So the answer here is not to live with no Shame. regret and guilt free. Oh. And no, <laughs> the answer is not to say I won't feel badly about anything. Um, rather to look at the areas of life that we have control over, you know, the things that I need to be disciplined about so that I can make sure that I get the run in before it's nine o'clock at night. I'm like, do I really want to run at nine o'clock at night? Or, you know, I need to make sure that I eat a good meal and a substantial enough amount of it so that I'm not trying to snack on the Doritos Cool Ranch flavor an hour later delicious maybe if they were just part of the meal then i wouldn't snack on them so much maybe an hour or less later so speaking more of running a good oh, yeah. way is to track your progress now i reached out to Corey joiner because he has reached a lot of prs this year and he does a good job tracking his progress so we're gonna hear from Corey about how he does that Happy holidays, it's Corey Joyner, also known as CJ the Runner. Thanks, Andy, for having me on. Just wanted to quickly touch on tracking progress. Uh, we're coming at the end of the year, and if you aren't tracking your progress, get on that now. I track mine with the Garmin Watch using the app, the Garmin Connect app. I'm able to see all my runs, all my paces, all my PRs I set this year, all of the tough runs that happened this year, and you just go back and just see how far you've come. A lot of the workouts, you repeat and you redo them and you can just see and compare how much better you've gotten over the years. So make sure you go dive into that logbook, whether you write it down or whether you use the Garmin Connect app or whatever uh, tracking device that you may use and use that to fuel you to go to the next level for those future uh, big wins for you. Take care. Thanks, Corey. Certainly some good tips. And I agree. I So... With our athletes, the ones we coach, um, I have a section on just addressing the importance of training logs in some capacity. Now, those of you who are on Strava, you're like, oh, Strava is my training log. But it's cheating. It's cheating for one important reason because it is keeping track automatically for you and you're not putting the intent into processing the data when you're tracking it yourself. Um, so maybe you are still. Maybe you're going back and you're like, analytically analyzing your data from your Strava runs or your Garmin connect and such. Um, those are all good things. Uh, my point more specifically is to get the benefit of the progress tracking. We want to be aware of yes. what's going on. And so I need to pay attention to those things, not just have it dump into the place and be like, oh, I'm, I'm using my training log Strava. Yeah. Good stuff. And we can also find out indicators for certain chronic problems that we have based on our training Say, oh, every time I do a hill workout, I have a hamstring issue. Things like that that you can begin to address and then strengthen that hamstring so it doesn't happen anymore. Or stop running hills if they <laughs> hurt you every time. Yeah, that's so true health and nutrition is, yeah. is one of those other areas that it's so easy to not be disciplined and then feel badly about it. Mm. Literally, physically feel badly yeah. a lot of the time. I ate way too many of those cookies or while I was enough. sitting there working on my computer. I mean, not I... enough of those cookies. I should have eaten more cookies. <laughs> I'm talking about like Andy. not enough food in general because some of us go, go, go serving other people like our children or wrapping presents or doing whatever that we don't fuel. Like I've, I had two days this past week. I told you on this podcast, you will get full Andy disclosure on some things. More than you bargained for. <laughs> and I like 
didn't eat lunch and I had runs around that time, which I know Megan last week in our podcast was saying that you want to fuel the most where you train the most. And I, I just was taking care of other things and people. So social media too needed a lot of care. (laughs) So all that to say, nutrition can be something that we put to the side and like we during the holidays, we're just like, oh yeah, I get this little snack over here, this special indulgent snack. But because I ate those calories, I'm not going to eat the good nutrition that I need Mm -hmm. because those are also calories. So I'm exchanging one for the other. And it doesn't really work very well to do that. We end up feeling like crap. So go back and listen to Megan's episode last week where Mm -hmm. she was digging into these things and the details of nutrition and fueling. So that's the thing that always just drives me a little bit crazy with food is that um, it's a fueling principle. It's a matter of this machine needs certain kinds of fuel at certain times to function properly. Um, And that's, that's the thriving piece. The function properly, I can define that as to run well, but I can also just say, you know, to be healthy (laughs) and that's function properly. Um, And so in order to do that, I really do want to try to be disciplined with these things. Um, And that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't enjoy the food that you're eating either. So this is why it's it's not a bad, uh, we've got a good clip about this from one of you. Yes. So Chelsea of May's Menu, which we mentioned earlier, she's the author of the cookbook. So she's very good at balancing the- Making great food. Making great food. But she also understands that it's fuel- as well as made to be satisfactory for us. It's important to eat for fuel as well as satisfaction during the holidays. When we eat for fuel, we're able to energize ourselves and get through all the obligations, um, busyness and stress. We also can still have the energy to tackle our workouts, which can help us to feel more grounded, healthy, productive, manage our stress through the holidays as well. Um, When it comes to eating for satisfaction, that's an important one too. Um, When we eat, it's not, we're not just eating for the physical component, but we get emotional um, satisfaction out of it as well, especially during the holidays. So when we allow ourselves to enjoy a meal with our family, um, we can get filled up internally more so than just the physical part. Uh, Secondly, allowing ourselves to enjoy those more indulgent parts can help us to have a healthy relationship with food and kind of get rid of the guilt um, that comes with uh, having foods off limits can help encourage a healthier relationship overall. So here's an interesting one with in terms of discipline. I promise we're not going to talk about discipline the entire time here, but um, relationships. What what does relational discipline look like? And the the idea that especially around periods of time where I'm feeling more tense, more anxious, it's not a bad way to look at relationships for a moment and think about are there aspects of things here that I'm just ignoring? Are there aspects of thing here that are unpleasant and I'm trying to avoid them? Some of those kinds of things. Or do I just feel badly? Cause like, you know, I haven't called my brother in a while. I should call my brother. And now I'm feeling badly because I haven't called my brother in a while and I'm still not calling my brother. And that doesn't help. So that whole concept of, you know, it, we, we see this all the time when, when I get the, the feeling of like, eh, I should, maybe I should do this thing. Usually that's a good sign to say, I should probably do it. Good point. Sooner than later. That's a really good point. And now during the holidays too, sometimes we think that our family and not just the holidays, I'm sorry, I I said that again, but this is all the time for me. I assume that Zach knows what I'm thinking and that he can meet the needs that I want him to. So I, he's going to go and clean the bathroom and he's going to see it and just do it. And he's, he might not see it. He's looking at something else. And, and really, literally, like, we're very different people. Every single person is going to see different things that need to be done. And a lot of us lack in communication because we think that people can read our minds deep down. Oh, I can. I just don't want you to know that. Oh, That's why I pretend super... like I don't oh, okay. know what you're thinking. Gotcha. Because that would be really creepy. It's very important. <laughs> keep, keep up pretenses. So the point here is there's there's relationship tension and dissonance in so many different ways and those things tend to be obstacles to thriving Mm -hmm. and you know i could like i'm running and i feel fine running but life is is kind of not stable so the communication point is a really valuable place to start with and whitney of the mother runners made it really practical and she shared with us in this next clip 
about it helping with the actual schedule to be a better communicator. Here's Whitney. Hi, it is the most wonderful and the most stressful time of year. And what is so important in combating stress is of course exercising yet. That is typically the first thing to go because we feel like everything else is more important, but being healthy and happy is way more important than anything else. Because if mama ain't happy, nobody else is happy. And I have found that probably the hardest yet the most effective way to ensure you get your runtime in is to speak up tell your partner tell your family that you plan to go running when you plan to go running how long it's going to take and don't feel guilty about it because you deserve it you do so much for everybody else and all you are asking for is an hour of me time to feel good about yourself and feel productive and that will just have momentum that carries you through the rest of the day so good luck and happy holidays so how about the the classic situation where relationship-wise, things aren't great, and I know it, and this other person over here knows it, and no one's doing anything about it? That's often unpleasant. It is unpleasant. And being vulnerable and putting ourselves in a position to care about things, it can cause us pain. Like, it's entering into a place of pain. But I believe, everyone who's listening, if you're a runner, that you know how to enter a place of pain gracefully. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. She just put a charge on your shoulders. Did I? You know how to make it hurt. So get out <laughs> there and get tough. Well, I'm saying that it does take a lot of endurance and understanding that going through the pain is part of the process to end in victory. And I know I'm using really like she just keeps doing fancy it. language, oh, but... <laughs> I do think it's really important and it's probably with some of the most important stuff of life to be able to go through these patches with people that we love and come on the other side um, in a better place than we were before. So that that kind of situation is the exactly like in the workout when you know you need it because it's going to make you better, but it doesn't feel good doing it. Mm -hmm. And that being the case, a lot of times these things are interconnected. And so you'll notice even at times with, especially on the run, um, the physical sense that you get while you're running is affected by these disharmonies and mm. these dissonances and such. So when you hear us talking about this and you're like, you running people, what do you know about relationships? And the answer is very little, in fact. Um, but we're still going to talk about how these things do matter in this way. Mm -hmm. So that being the case, let's do one more as far as relationships are concerned, which is this idea of, just feeling like I can't fully be authentic and, and myself in situations, um, whether because there's tension or because I'm concerned that I need to act a certain way so that this person over here is happy with the situation. Um, all of that, like how I have to pretend that I can't read Andy's mind so that she'll be happy with. <laughs> Wait, no. If she knew I could read her mind, she might be happier. Now I'm all confused. Maybe I know because I can read This is read the yours. problem with living a lie. It's just so hard to keep it up. So there's, there, there's a lot of importance behind what can I do in a situation when I, you know, I need to just be able to authenticate the dynamics there. Mm -hmm. So one way is to give, and I'm going to start with encouragement. So, or give your ear, give your listening ear instead of this self-centric thing that many of us have going on sometimes, especially these days. Are you pointing at yourself for a reason or was that just subliminal? No, I'm just, <laughs> sometimes I focus on myself and how I come across instead of listening when someone has something to say. So giving my ear, giving my empathy, giving encouragement and caring about what that other person is doing like their passion projects, things that they're going through, their races. All of these things help us in relationship to create harmony. Even if there hasn't been disharmony before, it creates, uh, it, it reaches out and it makes a connection between you and that other person. Connection, speaking of which then, so it's also not a bad idea to think about, um, you know, how I'm receiving from other people in different capacities too. And that was another one here that you had mentioned specifically, Andy. Mm -hmm. Receiving is very difficult for some of us because we are very self-reliant 
in a lot of ways and we want to stay that way. We don't want to be a burden to other people. I'm a two on the Enneagram. And some of you, I, I know posted about that. Yeah, That's it's right. okay. Essentially, I like to give help, but I'm very bad at asking for it. So being a receiver can mean actually asking for help, but it also can mean when it's offered to us or something is given to us, we can cherish it in love and not do one of these, but do one of the hands mm-hmm. open. I, those of you who are listening to the podcast, I, I did a handout She's and then an open putting her hand. hand around and pretending like it's meaning something to those of you who can't see it, <laughs> <laughs> but an open hand to receive and really cherish that love and accept it because that is going to create a connection. We stop the connection. If someone's trying to give to us, we stop the connection if we won't receive it. Mm-hmm. And I am very guilty when it comes to people giving um, praise I like to do this. Oh, but no, you're the wonderful one. Like, or, it's very or difficult like for me. hedge it by saying, well, yes, but, or thanks, mm-hmm. but, you know, I, I really could have. Nah. So I'm trying to do better with that, but receiving with an open hand creates connection. So those of you who need to practice more giving and want to give lots of things to someone who would love to receive, I'm happy to receive anything we have our address on the website you can give away he's totally he's totally kidding I'm only partially kidding if you want to give me <laughs> stuff you can that's fine oh that's fine all right now let's get a little bit more closely aligned with running for a moment here too um the sense the feeling of being out of control okay so in so many ways this time of year around holidays around uh, whatever else is going on right now there's so much going on um the, the sense of out of controlness is really difficult. And for runners, especially, a lot of times we grapple hard onto running because we feel like we can control it, which is also not safe to do because we can't thoroughly control everything about running. And you have those moments where it's like the workout's not as good as I thought it should have been, or I couldn't quite hit the paces that I wanted to for my run. And that causes an even further spiral in the sense of like, oh, there's one thing that I had and now it's gone or it's not as good or, you know, those things. Um, that's very difficult. That's actually one of the reasons why, in fact, another plug for uh, our, our runners that we're working with right now, we've been talking about this a ton lately. Um, the reason why it's so valuable in training to detach ourselves from the outputs and really just focus on time and effort at times, not necessarily always, but time and effort instead of pace or distance and things like that. Because by doing that, I can detach myself from that expectation as long as I'm willing to not go at the, look at that data and and think it gospel, you know, whatever that pace was, it must mean something. Um, No, instead, I just really focus on putting out the quality effort that I can for that run for that day and all of those kinds of things. Um, and that's good because those are things I can control within the circumstances, however they may be. You know, the sleeplessness, too much sugar from, you know, the food that I shouldn't have been eating all that much the whole night long um, and many other things. But so this out of controlness, the sense of like nothing's the way I want it and no matter how much I want it, nothing changes. Um, that's difficult. And that often accentuates around some of these other obstacles that we've been talking about. Mm. So one good thought is rest yeah rest (laughs) because we hurry and we go and when we don't see that pace we try harder and get more tired like physically but then if you put yourself in other situations when you're going 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 you're trying to make things work relationships we just talked about that if you're working really hard and you're trying to control it and it's like ah and it's not working we are fatigued and defeated and sometimes rest is exactly what we need. And that can be physical rest, sleeping, (laughs) more sleep, creating space, carving that out, saying I'm going to get to bed at this time and I'm going to say no to these other things that uh, have been asked of me. (laughs) That's not an obligation. That's just an indulgence. Um, But also, you know, there is also rest for the mind, So maybe that's turning off the cell phone. That'd be like maybe your eyes, your brain, turn that off and actually be quiet, be still. And then there's spiritual rest where we spend time praying and connecting to our higher power, which we believe in Jesus. And so we pray to God and he gives us strength and rest. So in all these ways, this rest can come to us physically, Mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually and mentally. And there's something to be said, too, about um, being – so I feel like I'm out of control, 
and yet how many of the things am I assigning um, out of controlness to that I, I can control? You know, things like time. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. How much time did I spend doing things that I didn't need to do, though? That, going back to the discipline point there. So as a runner, especially, if I want to have the time that it takes to train at a quality level, it takes at least some amount of time. It's a non-zero impact on the rest of my life. Absolutely. So that being the case, I probably need to make some kinds of sacrifices in other areas because I'm also going to need the quality sleep so that the run can go well. I also need to eat and fuel in a different, slightly different way at the very least because of the amount of running I may be doing. And so all of those things contribute back to the point of I might feel out of control, but I might have a whole lot more that I can influence about that than I am letting on internally. And we might not have to let go of it being perfect. So when Zach says all these things, he's like, you got to do this and this and this and this and this. And then there's drills and then there's this. Yeah, I get overwhelmed because I'm like, I don't know if I can and I'm not doing it good enough. And and if I did do it better, Remember that whole point maybe about be, planning as well. And, yeah, but even if I plan, <laughs> I don't want to do I don't want to spend every moment of my day thinking about running. And okay. I don't want to I don't want my Fair. life to revolve around that. I have, you know, kids I want to adore. I have content I want to create because I have a passion for that. So I guess when I look at it and I, I think about this control factor, I need to to release the control of being perfect. I need to make a plan that helps me thrive in every aspect of my life, not just being a runner. And the final point then is the whole all work, no play or all stress, no play. <laughs> Um, so we mentioned the rest point earlier, but also we, we've got to enjoy the things that we're doing too. And one of the most important things about running during an otherwise tense time in life is that running needs to be enjoyable when everything else, and I'm exaggerating, but when everything else is stress, when everything else is frustrating and difficult, running must be enjoyable. And I still remain in the perspective that one of the easiest ways to make running enjoyable is to stop paying attention to your pace and just focus on enjoying a quality effort. If this is supposed to be an easy run, take it easy and love it. If yeah. this is supposed to be a hard effort of some kind of workout, don't look at those paces because you ate three pieces of cake an hour ago and it's going to affect those paces. <laughs> Maybe not cake, but at least 17 cookies. So let's find a way to make it enjoyable. Yeah, so Shawana White is really good at this. That's why I reached out to her on Instagram because I just see see the fun, the joy in her running. She's a master's runner and just she's rocking it, but she's also having fun doing it. So let's hear from Shawana. Hi, my name is Shawana White. I'm a master's runner originally from Atlanta, Georgia, but I currently reside in Columbia, South Carolina why it is important to make training fun simply if it's not for me the act of running is fun but if i want to spice the training up to make it extra fun i sometimes dance before i go for a run or i dance in the middle of the run especially on fridays and also i run with other people that is always fun and also, when I do workouts, sometimes with some of my friends, we do a thing called cat and mouse. So basically, one person start and then the other person try to catch that person. So that's really fun. I mean, but friends, simply, you just got to love running. And if you just love the act of running, anything that you do on the run will always be fun. And if that didn't convince you enough, we have another example from Casey mm -hmm. to help hammer the point home that we can find a way to enjoy these things. Hi, my name's Casey. I've been a runner for about 20 years. And I think one really big important foundation to running and just life in general is to smile and to be positive in what you're doing. It just helps those around you smile and be positive as well. And it helps combat negative thoughts um, with more positivity. So the more times you can get more positivity out into the world, get more positivity into yourself. Um, that's what a smile does. It's like that shield, it's your armor. It gets you through all those hard times and it really toughens you up and it toughens those up around you. So if you can smile, you can choose joy and you can spread that smile and you can spread that joy onto others. You're doing good in the world. Um, and that's where we're all starting, right? That's what we're all trying to do is do good in the world. So I hope you guys can all smile with me in 2020. 
um, and on into 2021 and for many more years to come. So thanks so much. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks, Casey. Now we talked about like the science of smiling and that smiling can actually affect <laughs> your mood and it can yeah. affect your performance. So not only are you giving feedback out, is it a giving thing to do? Like you can help others experience is some joy because when someone smiles at you, it does make you. I mean, oh yeah, you're like an introvert. There, there are times where it's like, why are you smiling at me? Like, what's <laughs> going on here? Let's, I did. This I, is this awkward moment where it's like you're looking at me and you're smiling, and I don't know who you are. We did do this as part of a challenge for IGTV series, <laughs> and I did smile like almost my entire 12 mile run, and it was a nice day out. And some people were like, "Do I know?" Like they didn't say it out loud, but they like looked at me like, they "Do I know you?" It. <laughs> Uh, because Andy, I was smiling Andy at them. So I might have creeped some people out with my smiling at them, but I don't regret it. Not a single bit. Well, you creeped me out. <laughs> Every time I looked up during dinner, you were just smiling, even with a mouthful of food. <laughs> I I didn't do that, but I would, it would be a bad practice just to it see would if be it a affected bad my mood. Don't do that at dinner. Anyway, all that to say, thank you, Casey, because I do think that our choice to put a smile on our face can be both good for ourselves and for others. And thank you to everyone who helped in contributing to mm -hmm. this conversation. And just thinking about there are so many things in our lives that connect back to our main goal here, which is to thrive. Mm -hmm. And certainly we want running to be a positive piece of that puzzle. And that's kind of what we're all about here. Uh, but it can't achieve its purpose if so much else is present that's dragging us down. And so that's why it's never a bad idea to take some time every now and then just like this and reflect on what are the things that are making it tough and what can I do to try to remedy that. Mm. Good stuff. Well, one of the obstacles that we didn't mention here today, we will do a full episode on, and it, that is uh, adverse conditions. Sometimes adverse conditions so could get in the, the way. So you're the weather can contribute to... It can, right. but if we have some handles, if we have some motivation... And some ice spikes. We can thrive. Embedded in our shoes. So we're going to be talking to Anna Dalton in a couple of weeks. You'll want to stay tuned for that. So please do subscribe and rate and review while you're there. And as always, we appreciate comments, questions, all of those things so that we can get connected with you and so that we can share what you're thinking here as well. Find us at a to z running.com. There's a great contact page there to share some thoughts with us and on all the social media platforms. Until next time, everyone, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. <laughs>